Campione di Piloti e Constructore 2024. As the kind of noises coming out of Maranello at the moment, the home of Scuderia Ferrari is awash with optimism following a strong showing and qualifying in the race in their home of the Tifosi in Monza. Carlos Sainz claimed the best of the rest trophy for the ever mercurial Red Bulls in their Adrian Newey powered rocket ships. And this is a sign of greater things to come for Ferrari as they look to correct the course, aiming to return the team to its world beating position at the pinnacle of motorsport. The Scuderia's current offering, the SF23, finally showed a little of its long hidden potential at the Temple of Speed, with track specific upgrades putting it the second fastest in a straight line behind the insanely slippery Super Greased Williams. The SF23 was based on the previous 2022 car and its Grand Fet philosophy, featuring heavily scalloped top surfaces, but there was always some debate about that idea's longitude, and despite Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz accumulating four wins in that first offering, the SF23 hasn't quite built on that solid foundation. Leclerc, post his qualifying crash in Zandvoort, even explained that he had no idea how his car would behave in the twisting complex of corners despite having scored pole position in Azerbaijan and in Spa. Big sweeping changes followed in Miami, with Chief Engineer Jock Clear describing attempts to make the car more benign and give both drivers more consistent balance in all-speed corners. These subtle floor and diffuser changes, followed by revamped side pods in Barcelona which added a downwash ramp, moved the car away from the Scuderia's initial idea, and a progression of different front wings with many track-specific additions seemed to give the car back some of the legs we'd all been expecting to see from a machine bearing the Cavalina, the prancing horse. But news has dropped this week, where technical chief Enrico Cardile has revealed the 2024 car will have a brand new chassis concept and design philosophy. Beginning at the back, the revelation of a completely new rear end suggests new ideas for gearbox casings and rear suspension configuration, potentially emulating Red Bull's rear push rods, and aiming to achieve similar anti-squat and anti-dive characteristics essentially creating a car that's both more stable and more responsive, and that settles easier going over curves and bumps on the track, with the added bonus of holding the rear to more effective ride height, which creates higher speeds and avoids grounding out or creating the infamous porpoising effect that has been responsible for shattering the rival Mercedes driver's spines. And tantamount to any potential charge to the front will be rooting out the middle chassis issues that lie underneath the car in its monocoque and floor connections, with Carlos Sainz describing feeling peaky and disconnected to the SF23. That has come from extreme sensitivity both to track temperature and wind speed, which swapped around how the car performed between Hungary and Belgium. The car seems to hate high downforce tracks, with its larger rear wing spec not bearing up to match the loads generated by its rivals. But Ferrari no longer cares what the SF23 does or doesn't do. Instead, they're now full steam ahead on their 2024 offering, with every Friday practice session now dedicated to data gathering for the SF24. And their head of chassis has explained that they are crystal clear in knowing where the issues are coming from, and are subsequently revolutionizing the car's design approaches. Ferrari make a departure from the architectural principles they know are incorrect, and unshackling the team's potential from this year's constrained development. So when listening to the chatter around the paddock and online, you're likely to pick up the same rumors that has F1's digital discourse on tenterhooks, that the early idea of the SF24 is a car that may be similar to the RB19 in terms of performance, but with one key difference, it's a Ferrari. That means that beyond its magical superpower of gaining an extra 10 horsepower when an Italian person yells at it, it's also likely to be capable of locking out any given race it shows up to. Figures behind the scenes have suggested another major difference. The SF24 will be more of a universal platform. Much like the Red Bull, the aim is adaptability and consistency for all tracks to be at an elite performance level. But this will crucially also allow Ferrari to leverage a more important battle between their drivers. It's fairly widely accepted that Ferrari have attempted to build the SF24 towards Carlos Sainz's driving style, with Charles Leclerc harder to cater to and therefore more difficult to put a car under. Sainz's pole lap in Monza demonstrated this, showing their greater amount of confidence in the car as they threw it through Ascari and Parabolica to stamp their place at the front of the grid for Sunday's race. But F1 purists will probably agree that Leclerc is the driver with the higher ceiling. While Carlos Sainz is one of the best on the grid in their own way, Leclerc is the man Ferrari brought in to mold the team around. The Monegasque driver is both a favourite of the Tifosi and of the higher-ups, and very obviously the one whom Ferrari have their future title hopes banked upon. Building a car that gets the best out of Charles and helps him reciprocate or haul the maximum potential from the machinery will be critical. And with Science's future still unconfirmed despite their having a contract for 2024, maybe Ferrari think that a car suited both Leclerc 
alongside one of their highly talented junior drivers like Oli Behrman or Robert Schwartzman is their best chance of success. They're a team that have often had a clearly defined lead and second string driver, with multiple different partners to the legendary Michael Schumacher having yielded to the Germans' dominance. And who can forget Rubens Barrichello letting up a win? But with a car that should be set up for any driver, all of a sudden Ferrari could be a team that have their pick of any driver on the grid, instead of a massively heavy curse waiting to ruin a successful career like in years past. And they have been linked with some of the paddock's brightest shining stars this season. Alex Albon has been soaring at Williams, and the Scuderia's Le Mans conquering endurance team offers a large pool of talented drivers to choose from too. Alessandro Pierre Guidi and Antonio Giovinazzi foremost among them. If the Scuderia hope to win their next title since their last, courtesy of Kimi Raikkonen's triumph in 2007 season, they need that perfect car to go the distance and slay the powerful amorphous mass that Red Bull have become lording over the sport. But Cardile's comments that they now have the perfectly tuned tools they wanted clearly point to a dragon slaying future for the blood red cars. Where do you think Ferrari will be next year? I'd love to read your thoughts down in the comments. And if you want the Scuderia to be champions once again, then make sure you hit like and subscribe to help them do it. And if you want to support the channel and have your say in what content I cover next, please consider clicking the link down below. But as always, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, stay safe out on the road, and I'll see you next time. Four times title holder.